Hello, and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, where, as usual on Fridays, we're going to take a look at the deadly rated uh, Sudoku that appears in the Daily Telegraph. Um, this is, uh, in my opinion, it's the hardest Sudoku that's published in the British media. Um, I've not seen a harder one that's published regularly in foreign media either. So this is really, uh, it is the ultimate challenge. Um, so without further ado, let's take a look at it. Um, this is the starting position, obviously. Um, place a three here. And as usual, I'll be placing pencil marks uh, where a number can only appear in exactly two positions in the three by three box. So if we look at this three by three box here, you can see we have a one here and a one here. So I'm able to pencil mark ones in like that. And uh, I like this method of notation. Uh, it's not foolproof, and it often with these extremely difficult puzzles it's not enough um, but it will get you through most puzzles and often even with the difficult ones it gives you a uh, it gives you a way in so uh, let's without further ado let's see how we how we go you see I'm trying to use this this set of three numbers in the center here um, because it's obviously the numbers either side in rows four and row six, um, you know, we can we can infer things from from this pattern across the middle that allows us to get more pencil mark around the edges. There, uh, you can see this cell here actually needs to be a five, so let's place that. That allows me to make use of an earlier pencil mark over there. Um, actually, place a three here as well, which is might be useful. That allows us to place a three up here and three here and I think the threes are now complete in the puzzle so reasonable beginning and place nines here as pencil marks and nines there as a result of that and again we have a run of three in the block here so we need to be using um, we need to be using now columns one and three to try and make progress using the restrictions implied here. You can see that that's going to allow us to place a four and pencil marks and fours down here. Three, three, and nine. There's two pencil marks here. Um, tip that. I don't know if it'll work now, but let's just mention it. Is you can see actually looking at the grid, there are hardly any ones and hardly any sixes in the grid. So often when you're picking where to look for the next number, it's good to pick a row or column that contains one of these uh, rarely used numbers because often this is the way to find hidden singles. So I'm going to actually look at column eight here. You can see we've got one, two, four, seven, and eight to place. This is quite, it's quite restricted. This cell here can only be a four, I think. Yes, so that is a four. To place that, let's continue to look at this 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 row again. You see, this cell here can only be a seven or an eight. This cell can only be a two or an eight. So this is. This, this column feels to me like it'll be important during the solve. But can't quite see how to make more progress there yet. Oh, we can just place a 5 here. Look, it's got to be a 5. That means we can make a place a 5 here too. So nines into these two sets. Ah! Okay, so here's something. This is why I recommend this notation, at least to start these diabolical puzzles. So now let's look at rows, um, rows one and two. You can see that in this three by three blocks, the nine is locked into one of these two positions. And in this three by three blocks, the nine is locked into one of these two positions, both occurring in rows one and two. So whichever way the nines turn out, in the final solution. So if this was a 9, for example, then this will be a 9. And the other way around, if this is a 9, this will be a 9. Either way, if we look at the effect that has on this block, 
there can't be nines in this cell, this cell, this cell, this cell, or this cell. That means the nine is in either this cell or this cell in this three by three block. And look, we have a nine here. So this cell here must be a nine, which we can fill in. And let's put some a couple of nines over here. And I'm going to have a look at this row a bit more just to check. So we've got two, seven, eight to place. Ah, look, this two here and this two here. So there can't be a two here. There can't be a two here. So the two must be here. And that's nice because that gives us the seven nine double up here. Maybe we can and it gives us another another two into this position. And we can pencil mark some twos down there. Can we make any more progress? Pencil mark twos like that. Strange arrangement of twos in these blocks. Um, I think that's all the pencil marks we can make. I want to look at this seven. Yes, okay, this seven nine here and this seven. I mean, in this three by three block, the seven is locked into this position. Pencil mark sevens over here. Check this this column now because it's so restricted. So you can see we need two, six, and eight. Uh, not a lot we can do with that. I wonder whether there's a way of this two pattern here. It's bugging me. Let's just spend a moment just thinking about it because it it's not an X wing, um, but you can see that there is a definite relationship between the positions of the twos here. Um, in rows four and row six. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that if this is a two, this will be a two. And if this is a two, this will be a two. And therefore, whichever way round those, these twos happen to be, they have very profound effect on the bottom of the grid. So let, let's just take the example where the twos are in the extreme positions, first of all, and think about that. So. If the two is the twos are here and here, which is one possibility, what happens to where we can place the two down here? Well, the two would have to be in the central cell. That's the other because of this two here. The two would be here, and from the pencil marks earlier, the other two would be here. And we can't. There's nowhere now a two can go down in this bottom block, um, because. There would be a two here, which is ruling out these two squares. Um, the twos we've just placed over this side rule out these two squares, and we can't place a two here because of this two. So in fact, this variance is, is, is impossible. The twos cannot be in, the, in columns one and nine. So the columns have to be in columns two and eight. So that is probably going to be helpful. So let's rule out those twos there. Place the big two here and place the big two there like that uh, and see whether or not this helps with our solve. So now we can pencil mark twos down there, pencil mark twos down here and you can see that now we've locked twos into rows eight and nine in two different three by three blocks. So again we have the same thing we had going on up here with nines we've got going on with twos down here. There can't be a two in this position, it's impossible. Um, if we place a two here, you know, there would be two twos in row nine. So we can rule this two out and place a big two here. You can see now we've got nines here, nines here. This has to be a nine, this has to be a one, just using the earlier um, pencil marks that we placed into the grid. Those in this cell here now has to be a six. And now we've locked a nice six double down here. Um, you can never be too certain with these um, diabolicals. They often have a very nasty sting in the tail, but I, th I wonder whether that, that little trick we just did might be the key to a relatively swift finish for once on one of these puzzles. Um, see if we look at row 7 here, we have a 6 in this position preventing a 6 from being here. 
So the six is going to have to be in one of those two positions. Um, this block is getting quite restricted as well. In fact, if we look at this three by three block, we have we've got to place two, six, and eight here in these open cells. Now that means this cell will be a two, six, or eight. This cell will be a six or an eight. And look over here, we found this double. So we've got a triple on two, six, and eight going across the bottom. Um, which means this cell and this cell, I'm just going to write it in for the sake of showing you. We've got this one, four pairing here. Now, if this can only be, this cell here is really restricted now, this three by three block, because we've locked the sixes up here. We've got to place one, four, six, and eight, and an eight can't go here. So in fact, this is a one, four as well. So this is a six, eight double into these squares. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, that must be helpful because now look, we've got a one. We've also got a one, four. We've got all sorts of things going on. In fact, we've now got a one, four, one, four. Um, double in this square, which allows us to, I think, place that's got to be a 7 8 pairing here. And we've got 1 4 1 4 here, 7 8, so this has to be a 2 or a 6. Eight, eight, one, ah, look, we've got this 1 4 pairing here that interacts on that one there. We can place the big one here, that, and one that gives us, we can place a one here as well, um, okay. oh, and look, wow, okay, we've got four here, so we can pencil mark fours into these two positions, and that interacts with this one four double down here again. So we've got the same thing we had going on with the twos down here and the nines up here. Now going on with fours, uh, i.e. Uh, fours in columns five and six. Sorry, I'm not being very articulate, but I'm seeing lots of things here and trying to keep track of them in my, my mind. So now, whichever way these fours go, there cannot be fours in either of these two positions. And look, we have a four here, so this cell has to be a four. Um, not sure how helpful that's going to be, but any number at this stage of the solve is welcome. We need to place in this box now six, seven, and eight. Six, six. Not sure if there's something. Seven, eight. Oh look, and we can do, use uh, uniqueness down here as well. So I'm just going to show you um, by writing it in. I'm going to break my notation again. Um, so this is the pattern now in this bottom part of the grid. Now let's ask ourselves the question, what happens if this cell here is an 8? Okay, if this cell here is an 8, these two cells will be a 2 and a 6. We'd be able to eliminate um, the 8s there and we'd have a 2-6 pair. But look, that corresponds identically with the 2-6 pair we found down here. And the, the puzzle would now have two solutions, okay? Because whichever way the 2-6s go, they could simply be reversed and that would be an equal, equally valid Sudoku. So if this was a 2 and this was a 2, this would be a 6 and this would be a 6 and vice versa. So we know, we know that cannot be the solution. This is a good puzzle that will have one solution. Therefore, this cell cannot be an eight. We cannot allow that, that situation to arise. So we can place a six here, which allows us to do that. And that now lets us place a six here and an eight here. That resolves this eight and nine pair over this side place a 9, a 9, and a 7, like that, um, an 8 and a 7, like so, 
this has to be a 7 I think and this has to be an 8 now and I think that step was probably the final one in terms of cracking this puzzle wide open so actually this has been a very nice solve today um, it's we, we've used the same technique a few different times um, but it's been quite efficient to do that for, uh, for a change and I think we've got to grips with this difficult puzzle relatively quickly um, so I do hope that you've enjoyed um, watching the solve uh, and if you did please do subscribe to the channel um, please leave feedback we really uh, oops, we really welcome that um, and uh, we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic. Thanks for watching.